A seven and a quarter inch gauge Sweet Williams steam locomotive, part 34. Machining and drilling the holes in the ends of the protector bars, tapping the hole 6BA and fitting one of the complete units to a gauge. Just in case you're curious, the other parts in this shot are a couple of cylinder covers for my traction engine. The original one and a decorative cover. I'll be fitting this very shortly. First of all though, it's a bit of mass production, not my favourite thing to do. I have to machine every one of these pieces of brass bar. Once I've done that, I have to drill a hole in each end of them and tap the hole 6BA. I get lots of comments from YouTube viewers, usually telling me how to do the jobs, because these people can obviously do it better than me. One comment I got a while back was about the state of my workshop and it needed cleaning up. That is true, it's not the tidiest workshop in the world, and at the moment it's a disgrace. Hence this photograph for the viewer who wrote in. After machining the stainless steel ornamental cylinder cover, I filled five carrier bags full of swarf, and a lot more is on the floor, and in the chip trays of the lathes. The good thing is, this small brass machining job won't make much swarf. One at a time, I fitted the water gauge protector bars into the chuck of my Myford lathe, because at the moment it's the only lathe in the workshop that's actually fairly clean. What I'm doing here is facing across the front of each of the bars, just at one end of each of them to start with. And because most of these bars are cut to nearly the length that I need them to be, I don't need to remove much metal. The logic behind this is I machine one end of each bar and then measure one and seven eighths of an inch on every bar, then all of these protector bars will be the same length. Here's the job so far. The finish on the ends isn't brilliant, but it doesn't need to be because most of it's going to be drilled out and threaded 6BA. I've always had a problem with numbers generally. I do understand fractions though. I remember finding this very interesting at school. By fractions, I mean imperial fractions. And definitely not fractions that contain decimal points. The odd thing is I've spent time as a computer engineer, a musician, a recording studio engineer, and I've done various other jobs. And as I've got older, I seem to understand numbers slightly better than I did when I was younger. Now, of course, I just talk to my phone. I say, hey Siri, what is one and seven eighths as a decimal? The funny thing is, my phone is by the computer that I'm actually editing this video on. And if I say, what is one and seven eighths as a decimal, with the words, hey Siri, in front of it, the phone answers the question again. It got a bit annoying after a while, so I turned the phone off. Once I input this measurement into my digital caliper, I will use the caliper to scratch a mark on the brass bars at the right point. This is 0 0.875 of an inch, and I thought it looked a bit short. It should, of course, be 1.875, which equates to 1 and 7 eighths of an inch. I found out over the years that what I have has a name. Discalculia, I assume that's how you pronounce it, is a specific and persistent difficulty in understanding numbers, which can lead to a diverse range of difficulties with mathematics. If only the maths teacher at school had have told me that pi was for marking out the positions of holes on steam engine cylinders, I might have been more interested. I applied some of this stuff to each of the unmachined ends of the protector bars. Then using my digital caliper set to the right measurement, I just had to scratch a mark on the blue. As with most things in life, there are many ways to do this job. I chose this method because it's easy. And now with the first piece of brass bar in the chuck of my Myford ML7R, all I have to do is machine down to the scratch line. And I had to do this for all six of the bars. Here they are on the bench after I cleaned up the ends. I did this using my polishing spindle. Now I'm going to give the rest of the bars a bit of a clean. It's a bit pointless making them too shiny because as soon as the engine is steamed and gets hot, they will go dull again. This is what I use to clean them. It's called Brasso Wadding. And yes, dear viewers, I am aware that there are many types of metal polish. Now it's top tip time. 
or should I say quite a few top tips, starting with this one, which is a top tip how not to drill a hole in the end of a piece of bar in a lathe using a very small twist drill. You can buy special short spotting drills, but I haven't got any of those. Instead, I use the centre drill. One at a time, I put the pieces of bar in the chuck and all I had to do was press the centre drill against the brass. I didn't have to turn the handle on the tailstock. This was a very quick, very simple and very effective job. And now, when I use the twist drill, it doesn't wander about. The sequence is running at four times normal speed as I drill a hole down the centre of each of the pieces of brass bar. You've just seen me making a mark on the drill bit using a felt tip pen. I want to drill these holes quite deeply, but I don't want to go in too far, so the felt tip pen mark tells me when to stop drilling. Once I've finished drilling all of the holes in the end of the brass bars, I threaded them all 6BA. What I'm doing is threading manually, you can see my hand on the chuck, but then when I finish the job, I have the lathe in reverse, so I just engage the clutch and it retracts the tap. Once again, using a felt tip pen, I made a mark on the tap. This makes it so that the threads in the end of the bars are all the right length and stops the tap from breaking off when it bottoms in the hole. I don't need to thread the bars quite as deep as I am doing. The thing is, I have quite a lot of 6BA bolts that are quite long. So doing it this way is just quicker than shortening all the bolts. I'm not using a plug tap, I'm using a second tap, and you can see why. The tap is not going all the way to the bottom of the hole. Drilling the hole a little bit deeper than required allows a bit of space for the swarf generated by the tap. And doing it this way, I managed to not break off any of the taps in the holes. Time to assemble one of the protectors in situ on the water gauge. Before anybody writes in, I am aware that a lot of water gauge protectors have a machine slot, so the parts will clear the glass tube. I am not going to do that, it is not necessary. Because these protectors are literally four protector bars without any glass, they don't really need removing to be cleaned. Besides which, to remove them is very, very simple. This didn't take long to assemble. The gauge protector isn't finished yet. At the bottom of each of them, in the centre, is going to be a pinch bolt that will hold the gauge in position on the bottom nut of the water gauge. This water gauge protector frame is not a tight fit on these nuts. It must not be a tight fit, because don't forget, when the thing starts to expand when it gets hot, it's going to be put under a lot of pressure if the parts are tight. It only needs securing anyway to stop it rotating, and it will only be secured to the bottom nut. The hole in the blocks of brass is not a tight fit on the nuts either, so there shouldn't be any binding. All this is designed to do is to stop the shovel from hitting the glass tube. I think it looks good and it's very strong and no part of it obscures the driver's view of the water gauge glass tube. It's not actually going to be very long now before this locomotive is ready for a steam test. I've fitted the ash pan in place. I need to make some fastenings to hold the clamps. I think I'll make some special stainless steel fittings, rather than use the small nuts that were fitted in the first place. And that's it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.